Hi everyone, welcome to Newcastle Fans TV. It's me and Johnny with you for the preview. Yeah, hey, Johnny, how are we doing? I'm very good, mate. Yourself? Not bad, not bad. So, obviously, we're coming off a win from the weekend, which was fantastic. The games come thick and fast, and we've got another team, Johnny, who are in form in Southampton. What do you make of the job that Hassan Hutel, I love saying that, the job that he's done in Southampton? He's done a very, very good job. I think everyone looks at that performance last year against Leicester where they lost 9-0 on a Friday night and made Iose Perez look unbelievable. And you're thinking, well, this can either go one or two ways for Southampton. They'll either capitulate and get relegated or they'll do what they've done. And that's become very steady and look very, very dangerous. And they've started very, very well this season. They've picked up some fantastic results already this season. And obviously, they've got a man in form in Danny Ings, but we don't know if he's going to be fit, but yeah, they're, they're a team that you have to worry about now, which I don't think a lot of people did about 12 months ago, but yeah, it's a, it's a different animal, Southampton. Yeah, and you talk about Southampton, yeah, if you look at these results on screen, you know, you look at look at them, obviously they didn't start the season off fantastically well, but now, John, if you look at those last five results, they've picked up four from five, and obviously they've beaten... Uh, Villa, which were in form, they beat Everton, which have been in form, a good away point at Stamper Bridge, and you would expect them to be Burnley and West Brom. But having said that, they are literally another team who we're playing and red hot form. And it's a case you've mentioned Danny Ings there as well. If it's a case that he's injured, obviously we're all hoping as Toon fans, of course we are. But if he's if he's fit, then by God, they'll be trying everything to get him fit. He's a major, major doubt. But a major doubt for us, a threat, uh, sorry. But is anyone else in that Southampton team that you are worried about? Was he just the main guy? Danny Ings is an incredible talent and he's getting back into the England squad. So you've got to take him very seriously. I, I, I wouldn't surprise me if Southampton didn't play him on Friday. Not because um, not because they don't want him to play, obviously. But obviously with the England games coming up, they probably say, look, just give yourself an extra couple of weeks. Get yourself ready for us for a very, very busy Christmas period and obviously back end of November. Um, but another player is James Ward-Prowse. He got the captaincy last year after Hoiberg uh, left for Tottenham and looked some of the goals he scored this season alone, especially against Aston Villa. Two fantastic free kicks. His set plays are really, really dangerous and we've got to watch that. We can't be giving free kicks on like centre of the... Uh, park 20 to 30 yards out because he's so dangerous he really really is and I think he is very much he's relishing the role of being the captain as well so he's definitely another one that you've got to keep an eye on but Che Adams as well him and Danny Ings have struck a good partnership and I think he's just kind of evolving into Premier League football obviously you can see on your screen he played for Birmingham and um, he used to play for Sheffield United as well back in the day so um, he's been given his opportunity at Southampton. Uh, it, it just seems now he's taken. I think lockdown probably came at a good time for him because he got his first goal against Man City last year as well. So, yeah, there are a couple of players that you've got to keep an eye on. Theo Walcott, we know what, he, all, he, what he's about, I suppose, as well. Um, but they're not... They're not... A, what's the word? They're not, like, the most exciting team. But... I think we can. I think we can still get a result. It's, at, at the end of the day, it's Southampton, not Liverpool, Manchester City. Yes, they've started all right, but they're definitely winnable if we can play at our best. Yeah, that's all ifs and buts. If we play at our best, they've got a lot of pace out wide, good full backs and Bertrand and Walker Peters as well. I think they're a little bit suspect for me at centre backs. I don't rate Vestergaard or Stevens as a pair. To be honest, I think that could be an interesting tussle with Callum Wilson. We'll talk about the tune in a moment. But again, uh, just just before we come off Southampton, look at the league table currently, Johnny. They're sitting fifth, three points off the top, which is incredible. I mean, if you, if you, if you rewind 12 months ago, they've just been walloped off less than 9 0. Exactly, exactly. And Southampton, you've got to look at that 13 points from seven games. It's, it's a fantastic start. Everyone's been talking about how good of a season Everton have had so far. And Southampton are on the same points just below them on goal difference, as you can see on your screen. But Newcastle, if they can win on Friday night, we'll, we'll be in the top four, <laughs> you know, <laughs> which is crazy. We'll be in the top four. We'll be getting all, all our trips for Italy and Spain and the Champions League for next season. Uh, jokes, obviously. But um, yeah, if we're going to go. Yeah, if, if obviously if we're allowed to or whatever, but no, in all seriousness, it's it's been a fantastic start for both clubs this season. Um, everyone kind of expected Newcastle to probably be a bit more involved in a relegation battle, but Southampton 
were probably thinking, can we get back into the Europa League? Because obviously they were there not too long ago. But um, yeah, I think both teams are going to be absolutely fine this season. I think both teams have got too much quality in certain areas of the park. I think obviously both going forward, I think, you know, you look at Danny Ings, how much do you think he would go for nowadays? And then you look at Newcastle, Callum Wilson, St. Maxim, if he can get fire and Ryan Fraser, Al Niron, who I thought played well the other day. You know, it's looking rosy where it didn't really look too rosy for both sides not long ago. Yeah, let's move to the tunes as we're chatting about them now. Then the wing backs, I someone did a video uh, a couple of days ago uh, when it went out about the wing back situation. And a lot of the play, Johnny's coming down with left flank. Jamal Lowe seems to be that outlet, whatever you think of his ability defensively, but oh, his cross is not hitting the man or what have you. Do you see Bruce continue with the wing back system because all of the performances against Wolves wasn't great? Everton was better, and now we're up against a team who are probably going to attack us as well. Do you, do you see him sticking with us? Yeah, I don't see any reason why not. My only issue with that formation, I just don't think you get the best out of Alan St. Maxman. Mm -hmm. I really don't. I think you're, you're kind of taking your best player on the ball out of the game. I can understand why they try to implement it, because you give him that free roll, like Steve Bruce said, said before the Wolves game to the Sky cameras, it was give him a free roll, attack the defence, and I think occasionally that can work. Um, I just think it's going to take a little bit more time for that kind of uh, relationship with Wilson to evolve a little bit more. But I don't know. I, th I think that, I think I like. I actually like the formation. I really do. I think it actually benefits us defensively. And yeah. now, that, if you look at a couple of years ago, we when we were playing this formation under Rafa, we were thinking if we just had a bit more going up front, like we did uh, back then, we had like Hosselu and players like that, and it just it just didn't work. When now, like Hosselu and Christian Atsu, for example, now it's Callum Wilson, Saint Maximum, and Ryan Fraser. It looks a lot better. If we can just get a bit more out of St. Maximum and then defensively still be more solid, like we have been for the last couple of games, I think Newcastle can probably keep this formation going because we are hard to break down. And it means Jamal Lewis can still go forward. It means Jacob Murphy, if he stays fit, like we hope he does, on that right-hand side, he's absolutely flourishing at the minute. He is the man in form for Newcastle. I thought it was excellent again. And he just showed a bit, of, you know, he showed a bit of bite. And... Um, I thought he was brilliant the other day as well, Jacob Murphy. I don't think there was much said about him. It was all about Callum Wilson, Ryan Fraser, and Sean Longstaff as well, who had an excellent game. So I, I don't expect any changes unless there's been any injuries. But yeah, the formation for me, actually, I really like it. I'd like to get everybody else's opinions in the comments because I think it's a fantastic formation if we utilise it properly, basically. Yeah, we highlighted in the video that we're not attacking down that right-hand side much, and that's probably because Alan St. Maximum isn't out on there because he likes to float around. But for me, Johnny, he'd... Callum Wilson is scoring the goals, which is great. Uh, we need more crosses coming in from that right-hand right flank. But Alan St. Maximum offers Wilson nothing for me. Nothing. He's a ghost. He's yeah. And Alan St. Maximum is my best player going forward for me. And where do you put him then? If Because if, you're saying that Bruce is sticking to the wing-backs. Do you put him like left of the centre of the three? and say, go on then, son, you just go and play your game and allow Hendrick slash Hayden or Sean Longstaff just to cover, cover Alan St. Maximum in front whilst him and Almiron do their stuff. But the then there's is. a chance for Ryan Fraser as well because he's come off the bench and produced. Yeah, I think that's, the, that's the, the $100 million question and you have to ask Steve Bruce that, but I don't think Steve Bruce, uh, Steve Bruce rather trusts Alan St. Maximum in that position that you've seen Sean Longstaff and Miguel Almiron in that position because... It's more of a defensive job. He doesn't want Alan St. Maximum defending. You look what he did against Brighton. It wasn't great. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be polite. Um, look, Alan St. Maximum is best on a wing. He's not. I think he's okay centrally, but you get the best out of him on the wing. Taking players on, driving into the box, causing havoc, especially with the full-backs. But you don't have to always play... Like Even the formation we're saying, I think it's a good formation. You can always mix it up. You can always mix it up. If it's not working, or you want to try and get the best out of some uh, some of your players, like I say in maximum, maybe halfway through the second half, if, say, we're 1-0 down, change it. Go 4-5-1 just to get St. Maximum a bit more on the left. Just drop one of your centre-halves. That's all you got to do. So well, you bring Fabian Shane as centre mid, centre mid exactly. couldn't you? Exactly. So you, you, there's so many things you can do with it. The fact that we've got a player like Fabian Shane that can play in that sort of position, you can play him at centre half or as a CDM, or you can just take him off or take another, or take a centre half off. 
bring another attacking player on and move St. Maximum out wide, it can work. Um, but again, if, if he was to have a fantastic game on, on on Friday night and say he links up well with Wilson, we're thinking, well, don't need to do anything here. It looks like he's enjoying it. And plus he scored the winner last year. He did. Good memory. I was there. That was that was my last game that I was attending. I, I wish I was there. I wish I was uh, there. That was a long, long journey down to Southampton and back, but all the sweeter for three points. Uh, how do you see the game going then? Because I see it as, I think it's going to be similar to Wolves. I don't think the performance is going to be up there against Everton. I think Everton was an improvement, but I think it's going to go back to where I think Bruce will try and park the bus and counter. I don't think it's going to be pretty to watch. I slightly disagree. I Tell slightly me why. Disagree because I think both teams can actually score goals. Well, really Newcastle do. can score goals. Are you sure? Well, you've got a twenty million pound man who scored six goals in the Premier League this season in Callum Wilson. And if Danny Ings is fit, maybe I don't expect him to be fit. But if he is fit, you never know. Southampton have scored goals. They just scored four against Villa. Scored two against an Everton side, which we, which we did. I'll be amazed. Not. I'll be amazed. If, exactly. I'll be amazed if this ends 0 0. I'll be absolutely amazed. But um, how do I see it going? It's not going to be pretty. I don't feel it's going to be yeah. a nice match. I'll, I'll, I'll go 1 1. I don't think we'll win. I, I just, I think Southampton, I think Southampton will expect to beat us. And I think they always do at St. Mary's. I think there's one game that that's a season they'll go, oh, we'll beat, we'll, we can beat Newcastle. And we kind of always go, well, the same as St. James. Yeah, exactly. So, if I was up at a point right now, I'd, I'd probably take it because we've got a terrible record at Southampton, um, apart from last year, which was obviously great. But yeah, I'll go one-one. I'll say Wilson keeps his uh, scoring going, and um, yeah, I'll, I think Southampton will, will end up getting one goal. But yeah, one-one. I want to go all the way back to St Mary's. Take a look at this celebration. Scenes, Johnny. Scenes. Shame you missed that. Eh? <laughs> um, let's hope no we all. Comments. Let's hope we all celebrating in the living rooms. Unfortunately, because of COVID situation, um, and let's hope we will have a three point hope on Friday night because we are going to go into lockdown, which is a sad state of affairs. But hey, this it is what it is. But Johnny, thank you very much. We should see you Friday. You'll see me Friday as well with all the build up. If you haven't seen my analyst video from the last two home games, go back and check that out. That was released on Tuesday. Take care, everyone. Watch what you're doing. Bye-bye.